Well, good morning. Happy Friday. Uh, thank you for inviting me here today. I am not Sandra Freed, but that's okay because she did a fabulous job putting these slides together, so I stole them from her on my way over here. But um, again, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the work that you all do. It's uh, certainly important to the state of California and, in, and certainly important to the California Community Colleges. And I've been fortunate to have, uh, for many, many years, uh, I've been well informed by PACE in our work in Long Beach, in our work here in California and throughout. Uh, I'm also very grateful that I get to go before Mike Kirst because I will leave him all of the hard questions uh, since he has all of the right answers. Um, so let me just take a little bit of time to talk about the California Community Colleges, to talk about how much of your work is informing the work that we're doing, but also I'm going to spend some time talking about how we go forward and why we think in the California Community Colleges uh, the way forward is um, what we're going to be focused on and what we'd like to see on the other end of that. So. Uh, first, uh, I brought just a few slides. Uh, I thought it'd be useful for you all to understand what we're focused on right now in the California Community Colleges. For those of you who don't know, which I'm sure most of you do know, we are a system of 114 community colleges throughout the state of California. Uh, we are, in many cases, a byproduct of the K-12 system. Um, so we're organized in 72 locally governed districts throughout California, much like the K-12 system, um, which is, you know, uh, incredible to think that we're still having conversations about how to create intersegmental partnerships when we are, you know, we were given birth by the K-12 system, but we struggle to talk to our brothers and sisters in the K-12 system. And one of the key struggles, and I'll get to that a little later, is this issue of data, which I know many of you have been wrestling with. I've personally been wrestling with in our work throughout California, and we all wrestle with. How do we create a data system in California that really helps us capture what's going on with our students to better serve them and ensure that we're doing everything possible to provide them the right interventions at the right time when they need it the most? But I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Uh, so first of all, um, we recently published the Vision for Success for the California Community Colleges. It's basically a document that just lays out what we feel are the challenges and the opportunities for the California Community Colleges and lays out some clarity around what we are going to pursue, how we're going to pursue it, and provides a roadmap to those who work with us, who support us both in the field in our colleges and throughout California and the nation, gives them a roadmap on how to help us, how to partner with us. This document is important to us in the field, to our 114 colleges, as it is to all of our social justice partners, our equity partners, our um, higher ed reform partners, legislative partners, philanthropic partners. This is the roadmap that we feel um, we want to rally around. Because part of the challenges that I've seen over the years that I've been in higher education is there are so many well-meaning players in California and throughout the country. But rarely do we all align all of our effort behind some very discreet and clear objectives. We have a lot of work that goes on throughout this state and this country in pockets throughout that are great work, but we rarely link them together in a way that leverages all that energy and makes the impact that we want to see. I know for many of you who have been in this, uh, in this field for a long time, and I'm beginning to feel like I've been in this field a long time because you know I feel deja vu all over again all the time, but we keep talking about the same challenges over and over and over and yet one more time over again. And progress seems to be slow. And this at a time 
when the economy, the workforce are changing rapidly before our eyes and we continue to have to move the goalposts for our students. If you think about how much energy we put behind increasing high school graduation, and we are now at the point where we're seeing progress and we're finally starting to disaggregate data and see what's happening to African-American students, see what's happening to Latino students, see what's happening to Southeast Asian, Asian students. At the same time that's happening, we looked up for a second and realized that the goalpost has moved again, that now post-secondary credential is key and beyond. Skills training is key. And so we as a universe of people who care about public education need to continue to move at a faster pace. So the vision for success lays out some of those challenges. Um, I won't go through all of the slides and I, and I welcome all of you to visit uh, the California Community College Chancellor's Office website, just plug in vision for success um, and it lays out the entire um, um, the entire challenge, but you know, this issue of completion has become such a buzzword in higher education. Um, and why? Because we know that so many of our students are not succeeding in the numbers that we need to have them succeed, nor are they succeeding at rates across ethnic and racial lines that we know is important to our workforce. And the California community colleges need to be clear and honest about what's going on with our students. So we tried to lay this out. Um, we were clear that many of our students entering our colleges, for most of them, they're taking far too long, far too long to reach any meaningful outcome. This is unacceptable. And we must begin with ensuring that we are as clear about the data as possible so that we can begin to improve from there. We also recognize that this slow pace to completion is not only having an impact on our students, their ability to enter the workforce, their ability to have meaningful foothold in the economy, but also it's a drain on the taxpayer it's a drain on the state's workforce, and it's a drain on our communities. Education attainment affects health outcomes, it affects civic participation, it affects many of the things that make California great. And if we as California community colleges cannot do a better job of working with our K-12 partners, working with our university partners to ensure that every student coming into our door has a real opportunity for success, then we're failing California. And remember that the beauty of the California Community College system is that we accept the top 100% of students. This is what sets us apart. This is what makes us great. Regardless of how often you felt that it was time to go to college but didn't quite get there or got there and felt that you couldn't finish, we offer you yet one, two, three more opportunities, as we should as a state and as a nation. We also recognize that there are some very serious achievement gaps, both as a state and regionally. And so we've tried to lay these out as clear as possible. And to begin to ensure that all of our colleges are asking these questions. Who is succeeding? Who is not succeeding? And begin to ask the question, why? Why? And of course, this is why it's so important for organizations like PACE. We need to continue to look at these questions because most of these questions don't just manifest themselves when the student walks in the door of one of our community colleges. They manifest themselves from birth through pre-K on through the entire educational pipeline. And so the more that we can affect the trajectory of those students early on, the more that we can create 
the kind of intersegmental partnerships that we need to ensure that we can touch those students and, and understand that college success begins at the birth of a child, then we can begin to get at these achievement gaps. Nonetheless, we recognize that the minute they come into our door, we own those achievement gaps. They are our responsibility, not for us to point the finger at our K-12 partners, not to point the finger at university partners, but to point the finger at us and ask the question, what do we need to do as educators in the California community colleges to help these students succeed and to close those gaps? That is what California expects of us. So uh, we established some goals, um, and I'll go through these quickly and then focus my thoughts on what you guys are embarking on today. We want to um, uh, establish some very clear and aggressive goals for ourselves and our colleges that are focused on economic impact. We want to increase the number of credentials that we're conferring by at least 20%. And these are in areas that allow our students to have meaningful access into the workforce. We want to increase by 35% annually the number of students that transfer to the CSU and the UC. Now, let me pause for a second there. Um, I made a distinction from what we used to say when we talked about this goal. California Community Colleges used to refer to a goal like this as getting students transfer ready. I didn't say transfer ready. I said we need to increase transfer by 35%. There's a distinction there. It puts the onus on us as educators in the community colleges to own the transfer process not to wash our hands when we think we've gotten our students ready to transfer, but to actually engage, engage with our universities, ensure that they're crossing the finish line, advocate for more capacity at the transfer level at UC and CSU, and ensure that we're doing everything possible to support um, statewide policies like the associate's degree for transfer. This is our responsibility as well. This also requires us to work with our K-12 partners to ensure that messaging is done early through initiatives like College Promise, that we're working with K-12 to signal early and often to students how to navigate our system, how to ensure that they are ready when they get to community college to begin thinking about transfer. We, we want to decrease the amount of units accumulated by students. I think that all naturally makes sense to you all. We've introduced the Guided Pathway Framework to help us do that. I've heard a lot of people suggest that the Guided Pathways Framework will limit the amount of experimentation students can take, limit the amount of options that they have. And well, what I say to that is we are not limiting anybody's ability to make choices. We are limiting the fact that students should not default into course taking patterns that have nothing to do with their desired end goal. We want to make it clear to them and let them experiment on top of that. The others relate to ensuring that we get more students into the field of study, uh, into careers relative to the field of study that they're in. So again, much more focus. Closing equity gaps, uh, we are suggesting that uh, we cut in half, nearly half the equity gaps that exist in five years and completely close them in 10. And let me stop there. Of all the goals that we've talked about, this is the goal that I get the most criticism about. And what's that criticism? The criticism is, how could you possibly say that we're going to close equity gaps in 10 years? We are setting ourselves up for failure. And what I say to my colleagues is, look, are you telling me that when students walk through your door and you look at them in the face, you're telling them, I hear you say that you want to finish college, but the reality is I don't believe that you're going to finish college. 
because I don't believe that the equity gaps are going to be closed. You cannot, you cannot believe that students are going to succeed until we believe that we can and we will close the equity gaps in our colleges. So we did this with intentionality. We have to say what we want to accomplish and we have to hold ourselves accountable to what we know we need to accomplish. So the last goal is to just close these gaps um, across regions as well. And we know that's important to areas like the Inland Empire, the Central Valley, many areas, the far north, that have stubborn regional gaps that we need to focus attention on specifically. So that's our vision. Let me talk a little bit more specifically about how we're thinking about getting there. We want to be very clear and very intentional in our policy decisions, in our practice decisions, in our funding decisions going forward. We want to be very clear that every dollar that flows through the California Community College Chancellor's Office is going to be linked to some of these outcomes. And I know to many um, that raises questions of funding for performance, funding for outcomes. But the reality is we fund for outcomes today. And they are not the outcomes that we're hoping to see in our students. What we fund in the California Community Colleges today is access. And this state has done a remarkable job of incentivizing access. And we should applaud and thank policymakers for incentivizing this kind of access. The challenge we have today is that our funding structure only, only rewards access. So at the third week of a semester, we count how many students are in our classrooms. And that's how we fund our colleges. We have a lot of other archaic formulas, but that fundamentally is how we fund our colleges. What we're hoping to do, and certainly with the support of the governor and the Department of Finance, we've begun to look at a framework of changing that funding formula, much like the work that has happened in the K-12 system around local control funding formula. Can we incentivize a different set of behaviors? Can we reward the great work that's happening in our colleges to reach out to underserved communities, to capture more Pell-eligible students, get them in our colleges, and get them to some meaningful outcome? And along the way, reducing the amount of restrictions that colleges have to implement um, the resources or to deploy the resources that they have, and to create an accountability structure that holds them accountable to those outcomes. Just as local control funding formula created when it first came out, there is a lot of discussion and debate. But I think we're on the right track. Intentionality is key. If we want to improve outcomes for students, we have to say it and we have to mean it. And you don't mean it unless you fund it. And then you evaluate it. And then you continue to work to improve it. That is what we're embarking on. Intentionality, evaluation, and then continue to adapt. We have had a system of stagnation for many, many, many decades. We assume that just because we issued some new policy directive 20 years ago, that is going to stick and support our students forever. We have to be more flexible, more adaptable, and ensure that we've got the right evaluation in place to tell us in 114 communities across California, and soon 115 with the California Online College, we need to continue to measure and improve and ensure that we're putting the resources where they need to be. So um, that intentionality extends to things like placement. Um, for those of you who know me, I am not a big fan of standardized uh, examinations for our students. Um, and with the support of Assemblymember Irwin, we are now moving the entire California Community College system away from just solely 
leaning on standardized placement exams. Data set, well, thank you, at least one fan. <laughs> you, you know, uh, there is data uh, throughout not only the community colleges, but university systems like the CSU that clearly show that all, the only thing that our standardized tests for placement measure is how well students do on standardized tests. They have no relevance, no relationship to how well a student can do in college, how well that they, they can achieve college success. So we are moving to a multiple measures model. But in order to do that, we're going to need data. We're going to need good data from our K-12 partners. Right now, the way we do it, just as I did it in Long Beach, we rely on local K-12 partnerships. Of course, I had the great fortune of having one of the best uh, local unified districts, uh, and please tell Chris Steinhauser I said that, at Long Beach Unified. Uh, but they openly shared their data with us at Long Beach City College, all their data. So we could tell which history course a student took, which teacher at which high school, and that helped inform our multiple measures placement system in order to place students at the highest level possible where they deserve to begin their learning. And so we need to do that across the entire system. We can't rely on the goodwill of some local K-12 districts because the reality is some districts do not share that data. And it gives our community colleges a great excuse why they can't implement multiple measures. And so what did we do? We told them, well, if you can't get the data, then allow students to self-place but you are not going to rely on standardized placement exams. Because what we've seen in the data is even if they self-place, that is a better predictor of college success than a standardized placement exam. But with your help, we can get to a data system that does provide us good data. And I know I've been working with our partners at CDE and they've been very helpful uh, and working with us to create that kind of data system. But we need your continued support. It is a big lift, but it's going to provide tremendous, tremendous outcomes for our students. Just as it will for the CSU. CSU is looking at the very same issues that the community colleges have for many, many years. Placement. We need better data. And our students deserve the opportunity to begin their college education in the right place at the right time and avoid as much as possible remedial education. The final thing I want to talk about is um, the California Online College. And why do I want to talk about that? Because I know this group in particular has looked at issues of equity, issues of uh, education delivery models such as online education, the efficacy of curriculum, uh, the efficacy, efficacy of using technology to drive this learning, and the importance of increasing the number of Californians who have access to good public higher education. Many people have questioned, what is the point of this online college? We serve more than two million students in the California community colleges, and we serve them well. We need to serve them better, but we serve them well. The challenge we face is that we know that there are over 6 million working adults in the workforce today that either have some high school, a, a high school diploma, or maybe some college but no credential. These individuals are struggling in this economy. This economy discriminates against individuals that don't have a credential. Now, we can argue whether or not there's credential inflation in the workforce, whether or not these are meaningful to evaluate individuals' uh, ability to uh, work in today's economy. But the fact of the matter is, this is what's happening. The wage premium between those who have some credential and no credential continues to grow. 
And we are doing a disservice, a disservice to working adults if we don't come up with a solution. So what we have proposed is to create a technology-enabled online college using competency-based education model to reach these individuals and to give them short bursts of job skills through badges and credentials that allow them to continue to build on them and if they so choose, continue to work toward a higher level credential. But in the meantime, give them a meaningful set of skills that allows them to promote up, to have some sort of economic mobility, and to have access to quality higher education. So we hope that um, we can work with all of you as we think about this, as we design this, as we learn about what is working and what is not working. But in my estimation, sitting on our hands and arguing all day long about whether or not we can accomplish this or not doesn't deliver what these working adults need. They need someone to take leadership, someone to find a way to reach them and to develop models that, we, that are both high quality, public, affordable, and that we can continue to build on to help better educate all Californians. So that's what we're going to embark on, and I look forward to that uh, debate for the rest of this year and for the rest of the next 5, 10, 15 years, and we hope to work with all of you in that discussion. So I'm going to end with something that, has, uh, that I feel very personal about intersegmental collaboration and intersegmental partnerships. I know PACE has been talking about intersegmental partnerships for a long time. I have had the pleasure of witnessing what can happen when organizations like the Cal State University, the community colleges, and K-12 come together along with community partners, along with mayors and city councils, local philanthropy to focus on education. This is the only way that we're going to achieve what we all want to see. The answer is not in any one system of education. The answer is in every community. And the responsibility that every educational leader has to have and has to demonstrate to every child in their community. We have to own every child, every young adult in all of our communities. And we have to work, work hard to do everything possible to reach them. Even when Sacramento isn't responding, responding even when Washington DC isn't responding. So we need to seed our communities, we need to give the accountability and the responsibility to our local leaders and help them reach every single person. So I applaud you for the work that you're doing around building intersegmental partnerships. I hope that you continue to push intersegmental partnerships because it is the only way, I believe, that we're going to get to the outcomes we want to see in each and every one of our communities. So I want to thank you all for inviting me here this morning. I know you've got a, a packed schedule, uh, and I don't want to uh, make you late. So thank you for your support of the California Community Colleges and have a great rest of your day, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you.